teach them. Who's speaking? Jesus the Christ, the Messiah of the nation of Israel. He's commanding us what to teach. The idea came when we saw a schisms in the various congregations, many of them having some of the same social problems. So we said, we counseled and said, let's bring them all together and we can deal with what's necessary to help build them up. And it's very important. And that way brothers can fellowship, uh, congregate. They can get to know one another, share gifts, share talents. And that's what it's about. We come together, we learn the men especially, because the, the Bible deal, the Bible is primarily written in a, in a masculine tone. Because man, the, God requires more so of the man than a female, in terms of being the provider, being the maintainer, being the, the supporter of the household, establishing the household. And when a man is in order, the house is in order. When the head is set up, then the tail, then the, of course the sisters come as well and, and they support the head. Like the body can't survive without the head. Men are the leaders of the nation. It's a reminder for us as Israelite men of what our purpose and our mission is. So we come together, all the respective areas of IUIC, you have kitchen department, you have the security team, you have the uh, IT team, you have what we do in the military drill. All these different departments we come together because we are an organized nation. If I had to put an analogy, it's like a, it's like a revival. Hey, listen, we're the Israelites, we got to remember who, what we're doing, remember the mission, let's get recharged, if you will, and let's press forward for next year. That's, what the men, that's why the importance of the men's conference. Yeah. Hey, we at the clock's in. Israel, if you've been praying and watching, you see what Christ been plotting. Our bodies loaded in the trailers filled with toxins. Murdered in cold blood because our souls rot in. Sins got us boxed in. Woo. Listen, I think most I got every day for using IUIC for his glory. I would have never think, I've been in this for 13 years, I would have never think IUIC would be the way it is today. Today we got, we got school all over, uh, we got Israel all over. Uh, man, I just think most I got, man, for, man, listen, this is, this is, like, a, this is like a dream. He's like, damn, I, I, I never wake up. I, I wish I woke up. This is like a dream, like you never wake up. But it's, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. Hey, you know, I'm enjoying every minute of it, man. Most I got to use, use us for his glory, man. Hope it's the most I. When I first came in, I mean, there was a living room. <laughs> when I first came in, you know what I'm saying? Compared to now, man, it's just, you know, like for these couple of years, you know what I mean? It seemed like yesterday, and we was just talking the vision we have for this organization. And now the vision we have, we're not we're not satisfied what we see right now because we can we can build it better i didn't expect us to grow to what we are today you know 
you give all praises to the Most High for that. You know what I mean? I guess the Most High, he sees something in us that he could use. You know, because I, he see that most likely he see that we sincere in what we do. I've met brothers from all over the world. I've traveled the world, met brothers in fringes. Uh, they know us in the States. You, we, a lot of us don't even realize we're known throughout this planet Earth, man. And a lot of us don't understand. I went to Sierra Leone. People knew us. They knew the purple and gold. You go to Jamaica, they know the purple and gold. You go to the UK, they know the purple and gold. You know, the growth has been phenomenal. And once again, that goes back to organizing. We've never seen black men truly organized. We, there was a Million Man March by uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, as you know. Uh, hit a million men, very impressive. The problem with it is that they were not organized under one understanding of God, one understanding of what scripture says. They were all various different uh, ideas and theories. That was the only issue with it. Um, now the Lord is bringing up the Israelites and we are organizing the people under one thought, one train of understanding. That's unity, mental, spiritual, physical unity. And we have never seen that as a people, but we're seeing it now. Go. The power of unity is understanding a little more basic, a little more in the scripture where uh, in Matthew 5, 14, where it says, ye are the light of the world. Then it says, a city that is set on a hill can't be hid. When you look at the uh, components of a city, there's many different aspects to the city. You have, you have an educational department. You have a health department. You have medicine, you have burial services, you have sanitation, a water system, justice system. You have all of these different elements and all of these elements work together in unity because they, co they collaborate each other. Our people have spent a lot of time divided, whether it be through uh, religion, whether it be through skin color or, uh, or um, uh, politics. Uh, we've been divided for a while, especially through slavery Integ um, integration, assimilation. So the unity is very important because our people um, have been divided for so long that bringing back unity to us gives us a sense of family, a sense of nationhood, and can help elevate our people, our nation, to higher levels once we learn the um, concept of unity. We think we individuals, we think we separatists, we think we out here fighting this battle alone. What I mean by that, because now a lot of our youth run around with the slogan, uh, YOLO, you only live once. So they think of themselves. They think of for themselves. That's why they go out and kill with no second thought about it. But if you realize you are a nation of people, if you realize that most of put us together from a long time ago, separate us because we broke his long set of commandments and putting us back together in this last day. You do got family. You do got friendship. You do got brotherhood. You do got unity. You do got love of one another. All these things together is the unity we need. If you look at black America, if you look at the rest of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, we're not organized at all. And the proof of that is when you look at these households, our households and our communities generally are led by single mothers, right? And not blaming single mothers, but there's often an absence of black fatherhood in the household, Hispanic fatherhood in the household. So if the households are destroyed, you can't have an organized nation. So we as the people in Israel United in Christ, we're going to fix the households first by teaching them the commandments. You're going to fix your household, they're going to fix their household. With enough households that are fixed together, we can build that nation. We need to come together in order, in order to survive all the all the um, onslaught that gonna be coming against us. We need to start gathering together and putting things in place and helping building each other and strengthening each other. You know what I mean? Because there's no way we could do, we could do anything unless we come together, we got ourselves together. The forefathers used to be the same thing. The way we organized this whole womb, they used to do it before we do it. How the hell we get there? So it's a spiritual thing, it's not a carnal thing. So when we read old books, we realize and they used to do the same thing we're doing now. So how did we find out? The nation we're trying to build, we're trying to show them their faith 
is within each one of us to believe that thing. Then when we believe that thing, you understand now it's a new my game. You understand the my game, the new mindset, which is telling you, oh, you can move this mountain. You can, you can be better. You understand? We can make this organization much better than what it is. But as the Lord given us time and this present time we're in, it's going to get better. It'll have to get better. Because no way we're going to turn back. We have to go forward. The impact we're trying to make is to wake up the minds of the people who have been asleep for a long time. Our people is out here is like the walking dead. So the impact we making is try to breathe that breath of life in them and wake them back up and bring them back to the Heavenly Father. They got to repent first <laughs> and to bring them back to the Heavenly Father and serve Him in trueness and sincerity. God tells us in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1, gather yourselves together, gather yourselves together, ye nation not desired. So we got to ask ourselves, why are we not desired to be a nation? Because the nations know, just like Edgar Hoover knew, that Negro unity, us gathering together, is what's going to bring this country to its demise. So if we want to stop the the blackballing that's going on, the redlining, the murdering of our people, we need to gather together because that's the only way God is going to fight for us. Turning now to the group that instigated the Covington incident, the Black Hebrew Israelites. We're going to talk today about Hebrew Israelites. The Black Hebrew Israelites are described as a black nationalist hate group. It gives folks really an imaginary community, an imagined history. The more we grow, the more tribulations are going to come, the more trials are going to come. And with that growth, comes warfare against us. You are not allowed to make friends outside of this. You're not supposed to hang out with people outside of the group. The labeling that they're using, words like they're a hate group. Analyze the people that are saying they're a hate group, let's peel back the layers in them, like the SPLC. Who was it founded by? What is their mission statement? Who are they funded by? All these things the media does, and the reason why they do it is to slander our name. Remember what Christ said. Christ said that, Christ told his disciples, he said, listen, you not greater than me. They hate me, they gonna hate you. You got the um, um, different factions of Amalek that own, really own the media, the, the social media and so forth, and they're trying to stop the group. They're making statements like they're anti-Semitic. If you know anything about the Bible, Sem is actually Shem. So there are many lines of nations that come out of Shem. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are the real Israelites, we come from the line of Shem. Just the, the mere mention of us being the Israelites causes uproar all throughout this planet. That's how much they want to keep us down. The other nations spent billions of dollars to keep us where we at, to keep us on the bottom, to keep us hitting each other, killing each other, uh, selling dope to each other, uh, 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 look at our women as hoes. When you ask the black man who's my enemy, he point to the other black man. No, we're not. We, no, we're not enemies. When you talk, when you tell the Hispanic man who's your enemy, he point. He take. He 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 point his finger to the to the other to, to the to his brother. No, we brothers. Jacob have twelve sons. We are the descendants of those twelve sons. Listen, the white men know. The other nations know how crazy unity can be, because if we unify, listen. When the time come when we unify, they know. Once we unify, nothing can touch us. I'm looking out for you. Looking out for me. We're not killing each other. We're on the same page, same mind, same spirit. We know who we are. That's the most dangerous thing. Unity is unity among black people is the most dangerous thing to the other nation. That's the most dangerous thing. The unity in us is understanding the different factions of what makes a nation, what makes a city, and, and learning how to uh, uh, coexist, learning how to uh, interact with each of these different sections of the city makes the whole entire nation. How does that affect the whole planet Earth? This whole world, this whole, the whole world economy was built off the, of the destruction of the 12 tribes of Israel. This whole, this whole planet, the a, a world economy was built on the destruction and the exploitation and the murder and the rape and the robbery and the desecration of the nation of Israel. As we unite according to what God says, God says that he will step in and he will, he, he say, I will cut the time short so that, so that the flesh of my people will be saved. When, he's gonna, when he say he's gonna step in, 
when he's going to cut the time short, meaning he's going to kill our enemies. That's how it's going to affect everyone else. We've been on the lips of talkers for a long time. That group in purple and gold, those Israelites, we're not like the other Israelite camps. Um, they see organization as a threat to society. Now, the Chinese can organize us. All praise, uh huh? The Arabs, white, every, every nation can organize and it's no problem. But when the children of the slave trade organize, now there's a problem. They see it as an initial threat and it's a guilt complex. It's a guilt complex where they know what they've done to us and they are continuing to do to us today. And they're not going to stop it. Only the Lord can stop this thing. So until then, he said in Psalms uh, 50, I believe it is, he says, and I will set them in order before your eyes. And that's what's happening now. We're being set in order. We're learning re respect and honor amongst one another. You cannot be a nation without order. Order play a big role. The Negro needs order. Without that order, you'd have chaos. Especially, you know, how most I deal in the scripture said is a God of order. So we have to become in order. We have to submit ourselves into the order of God. Order establishes structure in our lives. Um, once we have structure in our lives, then we can now come together, like I said before, come together, be unified, and we can move mountains. Remember the scripture, once again, the scripture says, smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. And that's what we've been doing. That's why you see the crime rate in um, Chicago, the way it is, Detroit, New York, and even here in, in Atlanta. Black people in this society, we don't like leaders. The real leaders we had, we killed them. One of the problem is with us as a people, we don't respect order. Um, when you look, read right through the scriptures, order was always set up. Moses set up order. You understand how we set up captains and officers over the people to help them. That's something that we need to embrace. When we look at our forefathers from King Solomon, the way he designed the temple, that was done out of order. It's not just a group of people coming together under a certain name, it's a nation coming together. The Israelites must conduct themselves with certain behaviors, certain moral standards, certain civil standards. The Most High Christ has set up leaders over us, and that's who we're gonna follow. And we're gonna organize under those leaders that he's put in place. If everybody has that Negro, that crab in a barrel, Negro mentality, it'll be disarray, dysfunctional, It'll be chaos. Within our organized nation, we have many different components. In each one of those departments, you have men that behind the scenes, and women, by the way, our, our sisters do put in work, just for, just for you know. Behind the scenes, what they're doing is they're organizing each of the different departments in a way that's building layers upon the foundation of building the nation. So Israel United in Christ, the organized nation, it, without order, we couldn't exist. What verse you at? Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And if they were all one member, where were the body? Mm -hmm. But now are they many members, yet but one we body. We have many members here in IUIC, but we're still one body. Read. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You know what Paul is saying in essence? There's one word, it's called solidarity, unity. That's what Paul, the Apostle Paul, is trying to teach the Corinthians. Work well together in your respective positions. And he used a, a man's body to help them understand it on a, on a, on, on a carnal level, because in the spirit they couldn't understand it. So we had to break it down for them in a the body. Read on. Verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Mm -hmm. them, part, them brothers or sisters that you think are, are, are smaller in the, in the spirit or feeble, the body, Paul says no, give them more abundant comeliness. That's how they are. You got to see them very, because if you take away your toe, your stance of balance is off kilter. A toe, a small, your pinky toe will throw your balance off if you get rid of that thing. So you see a brother or sister you think is small, you, they're very necessary. Very necessary for the body. And that's what Paul is trying to get us to understand. Go ahead. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. For our comely parts have no need, 
But God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Right. He gave more abundant honor to that part that lacked. Like I remember, uh, remember the, Barnab where's Barnabas? Where's he at? Captain Barnabas. Remember there was a brother that said, me no sweep floors. I don't clean bathroom. That's beneath, that's beneath me, man. But all praise to the Lord. Once he looked at it spiritual. And that's what Paul is saying. Those, those type of things, you, they are very necessary. for Somebody, when we came in, we cleaned the bathroom. We watered the plant because we had plants in the school. We watered the plants. We vacuumed the, uh, the uh, podium. We did that thing. We cleaned the toilets. And we wasn't nobody. So again, I'm going to take a, a page out of what Deacon Abiel once said. You don't want to find yourself you don't want to be the finger that wants to be the hand. Don't be the foot that wants to be the leg. And don't be the ass that wants to be the eye. Does everybody understand that? So finally, the best leaders in this truth, you might not be the smartest or the most highly skilled, but you're going to be the one that inspires brothers and sisters to be their best. Everybody understand that? I give all praise to the Lord. All right. Shalom. This lonely road. God can give us a spirit of fear. On that lonely road, I. Yeah. On this lonely road, I. On this lonely road, I. The scriptures say that in three days and a half, in Revelation, that's saying the same thing in uh, Ezekiel 37, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and they lived, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, because they know that their time is coming to a close, because the Israelites have repented, and the Lord is going to step in and, and, and redeem his elect. There's going to be 144,000 leaders that are going to form together and not break rank, and they're gonna stand for the laws of God, and there's nothing that anybody can do about that. And then we're going to 149th Psalm, which means we're gonna rule the planet Earth with a rod of iron, just like it says in Revelation also. Meaning they're gonna be made to follow this truth. They're gonna be made to follow the ambassadors of God, the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. Nation, Nation turn, turn, Israel Most High Christ Bless, Cap Sarai from IUIC, North Carolina. Listen, if you missed the men's conference, hey, I pray the Most High that you make it next year. 2013 was my first men's conference, and each year gets better and better. Hey, don't miss out on the men's conference. I almost missed out. I almost backed out. 
But guess what? All praise to the most high that I was able to, you know, enjoy this and, and come and build because, you know, we definitely need that. Seeing that unity between black and Hispanics, it's a big one. And especially with what's going on with our people today, we got to understand when we're the same people. Tiene que estar atendiendo men's conference porque es motivación. I can't explain it, man. It's just one of those things you get out of beer. You meet brothers from different states, all type of walks of life. Uh, it's just, it's remarkable. You take the time off, whatever you gotta do, get out here. El mundo nunca ha mirado. Está llamado afroamericanos, está llamado latinos, está llamados indios nativos. El mundo nunca ha mirado que nos unamos bajo qué? Los mandamientos de Dios, la fe en Jesucristo. The main thing is, don't be scared. All people should not be scared of us because for the first time they're actually seeing real men stand up for them. Join us. To the brothers and sisters who are fearful, don't fear because this is all Bible prophecy. It must come to pass. We're not going to get the kingdom unscathed, okay? We have to go through this fire. That's the only, only way. Christ had to die for us to even get that the mercy from the Lord Almighty. So he had to shed his blood. All the disciples were put to death. They were crucified. Many of us to this day will be martyrs or sacrificial lambs in the street. Not all of us, but some of us. So brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. Hang in there. The kingdom is here. <laughs>